you're still watching ways now nelson mandela has many accolades he is an iconic figure that triumphed over South Africa's apartheid regime. He was a human rights lawyer, a prisoner of conscience, and an international peacemaker. He was also the first democratically elected president of a free South Africa. Nelson Mandela International Day celebrates the idea that each individual has the power to transform the world and the ability to make an impact. So, in honor of his 67 years of public service, the Nelson Mandela Foundation and the UN ask that you spend 67 minutes of your time helping others. If you haven't done so, try to do that you know, within the course of the week. Um, very, very... Um, you know, most times when I look at some of our African leaders, right, I keep on wondering, do we really still have selfless leaders that really just put their lives even, you know, at risk just for the good of others? Of course, I know some, some people in some quarters would say that Nelson Mandela, there was some compromise, blah, blah, blah. But if he is, you said go prison, go chop a coach, you know, go and, go and stay in the prison, suffer what he went oh, through. He went through yeah. Do you understand? Regardless, like, because we always try to find loopholes or try to punch people's, um, but he's one leader that, you know, if you look back, everything about him was selfless. Of course, as a human being, he had his own flaws. But you could genuinely tell that this person truly cared about the people. Mm -hmm. He wanted better um, people, right? Um, I, I don't know whether we'll still be able to find such leaders in, Af in the African continent. And this is not just limited to Nigeria. It's actually within the African continent. Do we still have um, selfless leaders that would put their people first and say, you know what? My people must prosper. My people must grow. My people must, you know, be seen to not just, uh, what's it called, exist, but let them actually thrive, you know, give them better opportunities and all of that. It's really, really difficult, you know. I don't know how we are going to pull through because being an African right now, being a Nigerian right now, is extreme sport. It's really, really tough. I don't know if we can ever find another Mandela Right? I mean, some of us grew up hearing about Mandela Stories. and then saw all that he had to do to get his people to where they are right now. Um, with the way the country or the world is even going, a lot of people have become really selfish, right? Um, you can hardly find somebody who is selfless. And to go to this extent to do all of what he did, I doubt. Mm. I'm, I'm, my confidence in humanity is not... <laughs> It's not 100%. Mm -hmm. In Africa, it's not 100%. We are our biggest enemies. But let me hear your thoughts, Isi, on Nelson Mandela quickly, then I'll get your story. Isi, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hi, Can welcome. Hello, ladies. Um, it's not just about um, Nelson Mandela being uh, an African leader. It's, uh, I think it cuts across all leaders currently in the world because we had the issue of the story of the coronavirus coming up and people saying was it a scam or was it a pandemic or was it a pandemic so we we have the um, leaders actually making money off the people so it's it's not just about um, an african concept or african leadership problem it is more about a global leadership problem that we have currently in the world today. Okay. I would not argue with you. The only thing we concern me we say we speak about my African continent. I know it's a global problem. Honestly, leadership is actually genuine leadership is very rare these days. It's not it's not it's not as before. I, I I totally agree with you. All right, so your story, um, Isi. Okay, my story is coined from, I saw it online and it was from a blog which had to do with, it says a group of leaders, a group of people were actually caught um, collecting or bunkering um, fuel, stealing crude oil from a bunkering facility in River State and they had this uh, they were actually caught by naval officers who actually caught them in the act while they were performing it. I just need to dig out the story 
basically, and for us to have an idea. What actually caught my, what actually resonated with me when I saw the story was the fact that the young man, when he was caught, actually stated something. If only we could play that video. He said that they are actually suffering, you know, and it's that's the reason why he decided to delve into this kind of business. And that if the naval officials could actually help him out, he would be quite grateful, you know. So we've had this talk, this kind of issue in the South South from God knows when, and it still boils down to the fact that the people of the South South have always complained of the fact that they have not been well provided or they've not been provided for by the um, community leaders or the their immediate environment. So it is high time we also get this into perspective that yes, suffering, uh, are pe the people are actually suffering, but we, we also have middle plane officers, we have uh, la the high plane officers who are also participating or partaking in this bunkering um, ah. theft. Mm. Yes, theft. And we also have the grassroots. So it's important that it's not just about the grassroots because this young man is evidently in the, in the grassroots. He's a thief from the grassroots. We need to look at it from the top. The high players, the high stake uh, players, and the middle players, they, they need to also answer to the government. Okay. Thank you. Ah, oh, this is well. Jennifer, your story. Uh, so a, a, a Canada-based Nigerian woman tweeted today that she borrowed almost 60 million naira to a certain person and the individual has refused to make payments. <laughs> so they've been playing and toiling with her. So people kept asking, like, who are you? Who is this person? What have you done to get your money back? And this is quite sad. Because a um, few days ago, we had an incident about a lady who was dating a certain guy and borrowed him about 20,000 pounds. Yeah, 20,000 pounds. And he had refused to make payments, right? Um, so people had to get involved. And at the end of the day, I think she was able to get about 17,000 back. I've seen this trend of people borrowing money. They've called out a lot of people who have owed money and they've just refused to pay. And I don't know what it is. Is it that people are refusing to pay or the truth is that a lot of things are, you know, drag pulling on, on us for those income? I think some people refuse to pay. Well, there are people that they collect money from you and they just don't know how the, to pay the back. Yeah, of they back. don't want to pay back. Hmm, just well. Right? I've had I've had I've had issues like that before. That's why I don't give out money that that I, I can't let yeah, go. I can't let go of, right? So once even as little as as little as ten thousand or twenty thousand, person tells you, Oh, I'll pay back and they don't. Mm. And I, I don't want to chase you for my money, right? Mm. The same energy you used to chase me to chase me for that money, to borrow that money. I expect you to use that same energy to come back to me to pay back the money, right? Mm. If you can't pay it back on a stipulated day, at least inform me and give me a heads up. Oh, I can't pay on the 15th. Can you give me an extra week or an extra month or something like that? Okay. Well, I don't know. So let me quickly just mention my story. Then I would um, take a break because I want Uti to come in and also talk about her words in the news. It says, a booming local economy can tame the current talent exodus from Nigeria, commonly called Jakpa, a Yoruba word for run quickly. That's um, from Aliko Dangote, the president of Dangote Group. Um, he said this today during a business uh, forum meeting. I think they had a, an event uh, today. According to him, Nigeria needs to be intentional about creating more jobs to engage the country's rising youth population. Um, so it, it's, uh, it's actually interesting that we always know what to say and what to do on paper. But in the reality, in the real sense of it, we really don't have you know, those. You know, so where is the enabling environment? And, and this is why, you know what, maybe I should just hold off on the conversation because this is why the conversation we had yesterday really, really upsets me, yeah. right? You are giving 35 million, um, billion naira to judicial council. You're giving 70 billion naira to the House of um, Assembly. They came out to say that they're even making matters worse, that it's for, for office repairs or something. 
when we know clearly that we have deeper problems, right? How are you trying to help me become better as an individual, right? How, what are the opportunities there in here? It's just so painful and sad. Like we have so many great minds, talented people, you know, just nobody is able to understand the perfect way to harness, you know, the talent and the brains that we have in this country. You know, it's really sad for me. I, and I, I don't know. I, I think that's part of what is giving me depression because I'm literally depressed. Mm. Take a break. When we come back, we'll continue the conversation. Stay with us.